Hi, my name is Steve Smith. I'm the Service Lead for Housing. Uh, part of my role is to manage the independent domestic violence advocates and the local housing office teams who both deal with domestic violence and this is about bringing the two teams closer together to provide a better service for sufferers of domestic violence. Southampton has one of the highest domestic violence rates in the country. Um, we recognise that we need to improve that service through the DASH risk assessment process and the PIPA helpline, um, numbers of referrals from housing staff have increased throughout the DAHA process. So we know now that staff are taking the matter really seriously. They're following the due process and we're making sure that we deliver a much better service to our customers. We wanted to make sure that our service to domestic violence sufferers was excellent. We wanted staff to make sure that they liaised properly with other services. We wanted to bring the IDVA team and local housing office teams much closer together. We consider ourselves in housing to deliver an excellent service, but enhancing it in any way we can is really important to us. I think it's really important uh, nationally for uh, this to happen that people who are working in housing and are connecting with potential victims are aware of the risks and aware of how they can be involved in uh, helping people be safer. Before the Daha process, our manager was, of course was very involved in that. We are already accredited as um, IDVAs, so we have accreditation, we have training, each one of us. And so for us as individuals, um, it didn't have such a, an impact, but our manager was very involved in the process. So we'll receive a call, we'll establish if the um, repair is an emergency, um, we'll ask them lightly how did that happen, and when we get told it's due to a partner, um, we'll then raise a repair as an emergency for their welfare, and we'll contact a domestic abuse champion, uh, or myself, I'm a domestic abuse champion as well, and then from then on, we, well, the advisors will pass a call to them to take their lead. So the advisors don't really get involved in that conversation, they just raise a repair and recognise that it's a, it's, it's a health and safety issue. I think one of the differences for victims is that people are asking questions and they're trying to ask sensitive questions. So I was talking to somebody that I work with um, recently and I was asking her, when did you first start to notice that this behaviour, this abusive behaviour, that there was something wrong with it. And she'd been in an abusive relationship for many years since she was a teenager. And she told me that there was a housing officer who her partner had been trying to push to do a particular action. And this housing officer kept asking her, are you okay with this? Are you, are you, do you feel pressured to make this decision? And she said she went away and she started thinking about the fact that he kept asking this question. And she started to realise that the behaviours of her partner were abusive and that they weren't right and that she didn't actually have to put up with them. And that was part of the first steps for her in the process of getting help and of getting away from this abuse. I had a, I have a victim of domestic abuse who's experienced quite a lot of trauma. Daha has enabled her to be able to move safely, be well supported. We, she had to vacate her property urgently. Boyd's inspector went round and was very proactive with our support. Um, he was able to secure confidential paperwork, hide it, make it secure, so that her ex-partner wasn't able to find any details about her. Housing also were unable to secure a deposit for an out of area property, so she's been able to successfully flee and live safely. And that was excellent joined up working between IDVA and housing, various elements of the housing team to enable that to happen. I think uh, the Daha process, thinking of one particular person that I support, it has helped them become more aware of the fact that there is support out there that they can access it when they're ready. Um, and that process might be difficult, it might be painful, but actually there it is, Southampton City Council are a good local authority because they are investing in supporting um, victims of abuse, but also perpetrators with the training courses that people can be referred to through the Hampton Trust. 
As frontline staff, I feel that we are in a great position to be able to get in and help our tenants. I recently used a tenancy check as a way to make contact with a tenant that IDFA were previously struggling to get hold of. Due to their role, they felt that it may put her at greater risk if they sent further letters or tried to make a visit. I could use what was classed as a normal housing role in completing a tenancy check to gain access to that property. Following my visit, the tenant has made great contact and engaged really well with IDFA. Following that, she has been able to support a conviction for the perpetrator. As um, domestic violence support workers, we connect with housing officers, we connect with people who work in housing anyway as part of our support for people that we're working with. So there already was communication, but I think we have noticed greater communication and even just a greater awareness of the need to quickly respond. So there was a situation recently where I was trying to connect with um, a tenant. She'd been agreed for a management move, but she was really struggling with the process. And um, when I talked to the housing officer, she that same day connected with the tenant, explained the whole process with her again, and just calmed down her fears and her anxieties. And um, just went through it all very carefully again, really um, sensitively, because I was in the meeting, and just took time that very same day to make sure the tenant felt okay and felt okay with the whole process of moving. And I just noticed how quickly she responded and I also noticed how sensitive she was in how she approached this person as well. Um, the Daha process has helped in our relationships with other teams because it's, I guess it's made us more aware of those teams and where they're placed and how we can refer. The IDVA service is something that um, our team has done a lot of a lot of joint working with. Um, we have involvement with the working girls, um, and so that's been really good to be able to multi-agency work with IDVA service and also with Yellow Door, um, and to actually be able to um, help people refer to things like the Hampton Trust. So it's definitely helped us improve networks. I've been really encouraged throughout this whole process that we've managed to get 25 domestic abuse champions within the service. And this ranges from trade staff, which has been absolutely excellent, through to housing officers. Um, and those champions are getting special training. Um, they're meeting together, sharing experiences. Um, it's been really encouraging to know that we have staff so committed that they're prepared to give time and effort to that. We've got an improved um, process, we've got improved procedures, we're making sure that staff follow those, we're, we've got managers making sure that there's, that's auditable across the service so that we know that Mrs Jones in Western would receive the same service as Mrs Smith in Millbrook. Um, I can't say how encouraging that's been and to have been received an accreditation award for that has, has really build up the service. So we've noticed a difference um, in, especially I would say for, I've noticed uh, greater communication from housing officers and from housing staff. Um, so I, I, there was one particular occasion where somebody had just gone in to make a repair, so it's just somebody who's dealing with a repair in a property and because of a comment made by the tenant they then talked to the housing officer and the housing officer rang me within two hours of that visit being made just to make me aware of the comment that my client had made and to say it um, is, is just want to pass on this information to see if there's something that you can be doing to help this person. So we've noticed greater communication and that's just one example. Since working towards and later achieving our DAHA accreditation, I feel I've grown in confidence. My case management has improved following our new guidance and procedures. This would enable any other housing officer to pick up my case and support that tenant if I was to be absent. Okay, so through the DAHA accreditation, um, we, we've, we've actually found out that we've actually helped a lot of people, um, which is good for us, it's good for morale. Um, I regularly have team meetings, um, giving the good news. So it's really a satisfaction at the end of the day. And you know, to come to this stage where we've helped so many people is something that um, we, we feel proud of and we look forward to uh, helping people more in the future. As a team leader for Housing Repairs, um, being involved in the DAHA process and the other departments uh, has made me more confident in dealing with other departments and made me more aware of um, what's out there and what's available. 
Information sharing between our departments has greatly improved since Daha. This has meant that we can all safeguard our tenants and work for the best outcome. Yeah. I think the Daha process has brought um, training back to the top of the agenda. I personally have um, gone on quite a lot of training in the last year uh, around domestic abuse and other colleagues in the team have as well. So it's, it's sort of been a really good refresher and just reminding us of, of, of good practice and how we should be working. And it's been good to do from a victim's point of view and from a perpetrator's point of view. And actually help, I've noticed how it's helped with overall working with people, like how do you interview somebody and how do you get the best out of them? And when they don't want when they don't want to talk to you about stuff, but actually giving us good ideas and reminders around motivational interviewing and techniques that you can use. So I think it's been great in the Daha process, but also helped in other areas. Since Daha, we've had the opportunity to attend additional training courses. One I recently attended was regarding victim focused. After that, I requested to attend a perpetrator focused one. This gave me a broader knowledge of what's also available for a perpetrator and the support that we can offer for victims. So in my role as a domestic abuse champion, we undertook um, four different kind of chapters of training. Um, one was very victim focused, uh, one quite perpetrator focused, um, and one around sort of the legal remedies um, that a victim has, um, and also around children um, and just raising the awareness that actually children within the home can also be considered to be domestic violence victims and they are also affected by the, by the home life. Um, because I work with domestic violence, or within kind of domestic violence, anyway before the DAHA process, um, I was pleasantly surprised about how much more my knowledge could grow with those four kind of chapters of training. And it's definitely training I would recommend that everybody carry out, not just because of DAHA, but actually gives you a really good perspective um, it was led by Karen um, and also by the Hampton Trust, who are a charity who work in Hampshire, predominantly with domestic violence perpetrators, which is a really interesting kind of perspective to have. We know that we've got accreditation in three years' time. Um, what do housing want to achieve between now and then? We want to maintain that consistency. We want to make sure that we, if possible, reduce domestic abuse. We're working with others in the council on a perpetrator programme. Um, we recognise that there are some perpetrators that continue to cause offence with a number of different women. We want to reduce those numbers. We want to allow women to feel safe and secure with the knowledge that there's support there when they need it. But above all, we want to really make sure staff continue to get training that they commit to delivering an excellent service so that when we come to accreditation again in three years time it's a very simple straightforward easy to achieve um, my hopes moving forward for the next year and a half would be that we carry on this onward trajectory of improvement um, in our response to domestic abuse um, and how housing is such a critical member um, of the council and actually the majority of cases we see there are always um, some kind of housing issue, benefits issue um, and I think as long as our response is the best that we can provide we'll carry on on that onward trajectory. I think sometimes we forget how much of a difference we can actually make to our tenants lives. That phone call or just that visit and have a chat with them can save their life. I've been overwhelmed by the amount of support that the Daha process has had, um, especially from my housing colleagues, from those members of staff that led the Daha process, um, the relationships that were being built between IDVA members of staff and housing staff. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all the housing staff who've had to go above and beyond what they were normally expected to do within their day job um, to help us build a better, robust approach to domestic violence and to provide a better service to the victims and perpetrators.